Hello everyone. In this video, we will see how we can set up an open foam case for flow over a square prism. So this will be a 3D case. So for meshing, we will be using snappy hex mesh. Okay, now let us see what is the geometry that we have. I have already prepared a case and you will be getting this case as a drive link or GitHub link in the description. You can check it out in the description. Now I have opened Paraview under constant under tri surface you will be getting one square.stl file. So I am going to open that in the Paraview. You will be having a cube. So if I go to data axis grid, you can see that it ranges from minus 0.5 to 0.5, which means it's one meter by one meter by one meter. So that is the geometry which we have. We are going to do flow over this square prism, which is the cube using open foam for mesh generation we will be using both block mesh as well as snappy hex mesh now let's start the case setup so first to generate the mesh what we will be doing is run block mesh okay so first i will open my wsl in this location I will source my open form. If you don't have multiple version, you don't have to source. You can start right from here. So first I have the block mesh, right? So in the block mesh, you can see that I have defined a block, which ranges from some value to some value. We will see what are those value quickly. And I have given some discretization for it. And then I have given the boundaries of inlet, outlet, top and bottom, front and back. If you don't know how to set up block mesh, you can check my video on block mesh deck and you will know how to set up the block mesh. Okay. Now I will go here and generate the block mesh. Okay, the block mesh generation is done, but the number of cells is very high. So this case okay, setup, which I have given in the link, will be for a very fine mesh but now for convenience purpose i will not be running a fine mesh i will just be running relatively coarse mesh as you can see this has around 2 million cells so that's not good so what we will do is we will scale this down like i will take half of this so it will be 100 50 50 i'll save the file then run block mesh again so now it is done relatively faster and the number of mesh is only around 250,000 so that is good okay now let's view the mesh yeah, I will double click on paradox foam that will open my para view okay this is the mesh which we have right this is what we have generated with block mesh so this is just going to act as an enclosure or the fluid domain here we have multiple phases like this is the inlet and this will be our outlet then we have our top and bottom and then we have our front and back so these are the patches which i have given in block mesh if you want to check that out you can check here you have the file okay so now we will see how the square fits in here and try surface open it wireframe you can see that the cube is enclosed inside this block mesh now we are going to use snappy hex mesh to generate the mesh around this cube okay so i'll hide the square go to my file here in the system the first step to run snappy x meshes we have to extract the surface feature for that we have the extract feature extra, sorry surface feature extracted here i have added the square dot stl and given an included angle of 150 degrees so that will work fine because it all has orthogonal faces it doesn't matter here i'll give surface feature extract hit enter and uh, my surface feature will be extracted so that will be stored inside the tri surface folder itself we can go here 
and you can see that it has generated dot image file and it also has generated this extended feature edge mesh right now we are ready to run snappy hex mesh but before that we will take a look at the file so we are also generating layers here so first the castellated mesh is set to true snap is true add layers is also true and uh, for the geometry i have added square.stl So in the features, I am taking square dot image and doing a refinement level of three. And for surface refinement, by default, you will be having three comma four. But um, let me put it as three comma three for convenience because it will be over faster. And then here for levels, I think when three is fine, five is not that needed for now. But you will be getting with five. Okay. So the location in mesh, I have chosen one zero zero. Because uh, that is going to stay very far from the location, like the center of the cube is zero comma zero comma zero. So one zero zero is going to stay outside the cube. So the mesh will be generated outside the around the cube. So that's the reason. And for layers, I have added squares as the location, and I have, I am adding five layers. Okay, and all these are set to basic default. I have not changed anything in these. So you can play around these values if you want to change, but I just took some tutorial and modified it. Okay. Now to run it, first uh, I will also show you the decompose product because we can run this in parallel. So in decompose product, by default it will be having number of subdomains as eight, but for your system you might have to change the number of cores. For that you can open your task manager, click on this button. Go to performance and press on CPU, and then here you will be having the cores. So this cores is the number of values which you have to put here. So make sure that you are entering the right value, otherwise you will face problems. So after you put that, now we can go to our terminal. We have done the block mesh. We have extracted the surface feature. Now we can decompose the case. So to do that, we will do decompose par. Press enter. And for me, it will decompose into eight different processes, zero to seven. Okay, now we are going to run the snappy hex mesh in parallel. So it will be MPI run NP eight. So here you have to put the number of processes your system has, same as the decompose product file, snappy hex mesh parallel, and then overwrite. So this is the command which we have to type here. Okay, you can see it. And then I'll hit enter. Let's wait for the mesh to be over. Now the meshing is over. So we have to reconstruct everything. So to do that, first we have to run reconstruct par mesh constant. I'll press enter. And it will take all the mesh from different processes and put it into poly mesh. Now, if you see the setup, we also have all the eight processor files, but we actually don't need them because we already reconstructed. So I will delete all of them. Now we have only the necessary ones. You can see we have the zero dot original constant and system. Now, if I go here and hit refresh on the para dot form, you can see that I have got a new patch called square. Now let me view only that. Nice surface with edges you can see that this is the square which we have got it's it's good mesh okay and we go to internal mesh you can see that we have the volume mesh properly done okay. let us view by taking a slice maybe i'll take a slice on z direction this is a decent mesh so this problem is coming because of the visualization. Actually, this is not an error. You can eliminate that just by trying to move this. Sometimes it works. Okay, you see, it, it is because of the visualization and not actually the error. 
so now we have the mesh also we can start simulation for simulation first we will decompose the case but before decomposing we don't have a zero file we have to copy paste our zero dot original into zero so to do that you can type cp hyphen r zero dot original space zero that's convenient way or if you are convenient with just copy pasting it manually from here you can also do that let me quickly show what is the case setup here so in the velocity i have given fixed value of one meters per second in x direction positive x direction outlet is zero gradient front and back and top and bottom or slip walls we are, we are not trading it as walls it's a more like symmetry condition then for square it is slip and uh, that's for velocity if i go to pressure you can see only the outlet has a fixed value everything is zero gradient so you can use this kind of notation instead of just writing it over and over again just make sure that you don't give any spaces in between and you put double quotes and then let's start with the turbulence files for the k the inlet have a fixed value of 0 0.24 outlet has a fixed value with the inlet outlet condition with 0 0.24 as inlet value and value for everything else which is a wall we have kqr wall function that's very standard similarly for uh, new t or turbulent kinematic viscosity we have all zero it's very standard to do that uh, actually you could have added inlet and outlet here if you want to try you can do that i just wanted to keep it separately then we are using k omega sst model so we have omega similar to k for here we have the fixed value and it's 1.78 for outlet it's inlet outlet condition inlet value 1.78 if you want to know how this value is calculated or how this value is calculated you can check open forms documentation on k omega sst they have clearly given the equation on how to calculate so for walls i have given omega wall function right now let's see constant here there is a gravity file but in our case it's completely zero and for transport properties i have given the kinematic viscosity as one i am not treating it as any specific fluid and for turbulence properties obviously we are using k omega sst rans model so that's it about the k setup and uh, in the control deck we can see that this is a pimple foam solver it's seen in the application and uh, i am doing adaptive time stepping okay so for adaptive time stepping we can use maximum co1 maximum delta is one and this is the current number actually also known as cfl number and we have the delta t as 0 0.0001 this is like the initial guess if this doesn't work it will go further down to maintain the current number to one and i have given end time as 10 start time as zero so this is what we are doing and write interval is set to 0 0.01 if you have a very bad pc or a slow running pc with less number of course try to save it as many as possible like 0 0.01 or, or at least 0 0.005 something like that later you can delete it while reconstructing so that's not an issue okay so i go here and okay before i run i have only one thing to show in fv schemes and fv solution i have not altered anything from here we are using k omega sst make sure that you are adding this wall distance function as mesh wave and in fv solution you can find that we are using pimple algorithm obviously and here also i have added k omega sst models so that's it for the setup now we will see how to run it first i will do decompose par that will decompose the entire mesh that i have okay there was no error but now this case is going to take long time to simulate so i am not actually going to simulate it completely so what i am going to do is i will start at this time just end it in three to four iterations and then i will tell you the command which is needed for reconstruction but actually i'm not going to run and reconstruct and show the simulation okay to run it it's standard mpi run 
np8 pimple foam parallel so when you do this command it will start the simulation you should not face any errors mostly i hope you don't face any errors so you can see that the time step has gone till 1.3 or 1.4 minus 6 that's very small it's around microseconds so we are not going to get case files anytime soon right so what i'm going to do is i'll just change this to 0 0.0009 save it and wait for it to reach 0 0.0009 which it will reach soon enough it has reached 0 0.0009 mostly we would have got one file yes we have got one file i'm not going to run any further so when you are actually running you will be getting files like this a lot of time step so either you can just use paraview here you can go to decompose the case click on apply then you will have the case right so here you can go to slice planes then plot your velocity and see what it gives you that's one way to do it without reconstructing or else after your simulation is done you can just type reconstruct par so this is all that you have to do when you hit enter it will reconstruct all the time steps since it is a transient case we need all the time steps so it will reconstruct when you have more time steps it will take a lot of time okay so we have the time step here right so now you can just open your paraview and it will directly load your 0.009 and again the same result is what you are going to see here it's not much different I mean, it's not any different at all you can see that this is exactly the same result that we got here as well because it's the same thing it is just not reconstructed here actually you can see how it is not reconstructed you can go to paraview sorry paradot foam here you choose solid color and choose wireframe you can see that there are actually eight blocks so these are the data from different processors so this was from one processor this is from one this is from one this is from one so you can see all the data from different processors so paraview is just nicely uh, reconstructing everything for you from the decompose case and then it is visualizing the results otherwise it's pretty much same as reconstructing except you save a lot of time because reconstruction takes a lot of time okay so that's it for this video i hope you understood how to simulate and if you have any doubts you can drop down in the comments or mail us at admin at codynamics.com i'll give the mail id also in the description see you in another video